A very good evening to you and welcome to RTV News with me, Fiona Mbavasi. Now, a cross-section of Rwandan citizens are calling on the young generation to learn from the Rwandan heroes and diligently play their parts right now. Officials at the Chancellery for Heroes, National Orders and Decorations of Honor echoed this echoed that this rather will help the country to develop. We have that story with Serge Nore. Jean-Baptiste Nhajengwa lives in Nyamata sector, Bujesara district in the eastern province. At 79 years of age, he is adamant that for a person to be considered a hero, he or she must first do certain things. You must learn to do what is required without beating about the bush, and you must not lie. It's a struggle because you must properly fulfill your responsibilities. It does not matter if you're a civilian, soldier or politician. You must care for and live with others in harmony while respecting the country's laws. You must remain on the path to meet the country's needs. The young people we spoke to agree that heroism is earned. Being a hero does not require an expensive education or other lofty achievements. All it requires is that you do not let your country become victimized as you stand by, or let what has been achieved come to nothing. As youth, we must learn from the heroes that came before us, prepared to give our lives for the country. Being a hero means you must be properly behaved doing things that please people and have a good reputation. Everyone should see that you are a person of integrity. Parents too are being urged to teach their children values that will help them grow into people the country can be proud of. The solution is that parents learn to talk to their children, teach them well so that they are properly brought up with good behavior, just as our culture as Rwandans requires. Leaders too should advise the youth. The young should be properly taught by those responsible. The fact is no young person can find their way without being led by people with policies that actually benefit the country. This year's Heroes Day was marked as the COVID-19 pandemic continues to maintain its hold on the country. Nevertheless, people have been urged not to forget what Rwanda's heroes did. We are asking people across the country to use the available means such as technology to mark this day and remind each other of the qualities that heroism entails while teaching the youth about them. This will ensure that the legacy is carried forward in time and that our country continues to develop. President Paul Kagame also tweeted to the country on Monday as Heroes Day was marked, saying, and I quote, Happy Heroes Day to every Rwandan. The selfless dedication to our country of the heroes we honor today showed us what we can achieve. The nation we have is a result of their sacrifice. These are the values we pass on to the next generations. This pandemic has shown us that we are all capable of heroic acts. As we continue the fight against COVID-19, we thank the frontline health workers, the security services for their heroic sacrifice and call on every citizen to keep each other safe. End of quote. The usual meetings that used to mark Heroes Day as people came together in settlements to discuss the importance of what was achieved through heroism were this year replaced by exchanges online using social media sites. As Rwanda celebrated Heroes Day, residents of Bungarama in Rusizi district commended the actions of Dr. Simon Baroshimana, who has been involved in the construction of more than 30 classrooms and various other activities to develop the area. Gloria Mutesi with the details. Dr. Mbaroshimana Simon was born in Bugarama but now lives in the United Kingdom on the European continent. He says his journey was a tough one and he got a lot of help in his education, something that prompted him to look back and be part of a solution to problems he experienced while studying. I came up with the idea based on the fact that I attribute all that I have achieved as a surgeon today to the help I received from a missionary who assisted me and paid for my education. 
and I also got the courage to help others through education. Our aim is education today for zero aid, and that's how I got the courage. With the education vision the government of Rwanda has, so we could support each other and put our efforts together to see children get an education. That's how the vision started in 2007. While in the UK, he recalled his journey through school and then decided to seek for donors who would help him build classrooms back home. Since 2007, they've built 36 classrooms and renovated 24, two kitchens, 36 toilets, and two basketball courts. The beneficiaries are Mihabura Primary School, Lianghana Primary School, Nyakagoma, Moko School Complex, and Chibanjira. Dr. Simon has also paid school fees for more than 100 secondary school students and more than 30 at university level. Since 2007 and until now, he has been involved in providing food to teachers and students at Muhabura School and has provided cows to 10 families. In so doing, the community sees this as a source of great courage and true heroism. <laughs> We consider him a hero, as someone who has developed Pugarama. We are speechless when it comes to all he has done for us. He is selfless regardless of what he went through while in school. And to us, he is one that loves to help people in all ways and bring development. <laughs> The results of his work speak for itself and residents wish for more people like him. He's a true hero for Bugarama. In fact, if we could have 10 more people like him who go abroad and remember their country, we would benefit a lot. Residents say their goal is to train their children to follow in Dr. Simon's footsteps by instilling them in them the spirit of true heroism. <laughs> We feel he has taught us a lot and we would wish to instill this in our children to also solve the issues in our society. We've learned from him to be patriotic and to love our country. Wherever we go, we should remember that Rwanda is home and remember that Rwandans we have left behind need development too. The Rwanda National Police has announced that over the past two weeks, more than 100,000 people have been caught breaking COVID-19 preventive measures in Kigali as the city remains in lockdown. Martina Abera with more. Fifteen days ago, the cabinet announced new measures to combat the spread of COVID-19, especially in Kigali City. The program is approved by the health authorities as a response and they wait to see where the problem is most concentrated in order to stop the spread. Some residents say the program is like a cure or a vaccine that is very necessary, but that compliance is important. I have nowhere else to go except to go on the road and buy airtime and go back home. Because there is no work to go to. So this has helped me to avoid contracting the virus because I wasn't infected and those I stay with weren't as well. So I feel protected. Instead of contracting the disease or infecting others, you can stay home. Later on, life will get back to normal. We stay at home and wait patiently as we obey the restriction measures because this is our life. Even if they tell us to stay at home and we feel like it is too much, otherwise it is our lives that we need to protect. On the other hand, those who are required to adhere to the measures to prevent this pandemic, including the stay-at-home program, there are those that don't abide. The Rwanda National Police is one of the sectors supervising the implementation of these programs. They say that more than 100 were arrested in acts of violation of these regulations. In two weeks, there were new strategies put in place by the recent cabinet meeting, as said by the spokesperson of the police, CP John Bosco Cabrera. There are those that still don't wear their mask, and we have spent about 10 months wearing it, so it should not be a problem at this point. The second is people being caught in bars. Some people are caught drunk by the police. Some people are also caught throwing parties at their home, and it is something we have been advised by many health authorities. Mm -hmm. 
The stay-at-home strategy, however, is to continue the necessary activities, and the government has provided a land for those who want to leave their homes and go for these activities. They seek permission and are given a clear approach to these activities. <laughs> That's their right and it's the proper thing to do, but it should be done when someone is going to do important things. Obviously, there are people who don't understand the instructions and when they came out, we specifically asked them to thoroughly read them well. Of course, issuing a license is not a rationale. I give examples of some people who request for permission and say that they will go on a bicycle or a motorbike and it is not allowed to transport people on them. Some people also say that they want to visit a sick person coming out of Kigali. Our responsibility is to teach them and explain to them. Dr. Vedas Naringwa, a health expert, says that in such cases, when the country is facing a pandemic and people themselves are the ones who have the key to strategies that otherwise endanger the well-being of other people. You know that this stay at home will not end, but it will end based on monitoring by the health authorities and assessing the state of the pandemic. So this time it is short or long, depending on our behavior. So my advice to people is to tighten the precautionary measures so that the figures on which they make decisions on can decrease. <laughs> Strict measures, including the stay-at-home program in Kigali, were taken at a cabinet meeting on the 18th of last month. Health authorities say the measures were taken because of the high rate of new infections. In the last three days of the 15 days, when the new measures were imposed in the city of Kigali, there has been a rise in the COVID-19 infections and those who have succumbed to the virus as well. Martina Abera, RTV News. Still with the lockdown, the city of Kigali has begun providing food to families affected by the lockdown. At this stage, 1,450 tons are expected to be distributed to families that have diminished the savings. Umgari Ted tells us more. This is the second group of 60,000 families provided with food in Kigali City. There are people who believe they had enough to last, but that was not the case. Neighbors are reaching out to help those in their community affected. We were able to live day by day with the food we had available to us. Two weeks would have not been a long enough period to finish what we had. However, we thank our government for always watching over the people. When we felt we had to gather strength, the government is always lending a helping hand. It is only right for us to thank God and ask God to bless them for taking care of our communities. One can see that their neighbor has not eaten and happily provide them with something to sustain them for the day. It is customary to help those and that's what happens here. It would really help us if they provided us with beans and maize flour. It makes us happy because food was finished in our homes. May God bless them. Residents say it is wrong for their neighbor to sleep hungry when they have food in their homes. Others say it is the culture of Rwandans to help and support those in their communities. I don't ask for food because I have food at home. Sometimes we find that parents that stay at home with their children are not aware of this but we make sure to share and cook with them so they may sleep well. Hungry people who have neighbors should find it in themselves to ask for help if needed. We have all seen the different ways this pandemic has affected us. Usually, the food is stored at the national warehouse and taken to be distributed to the people. As part of its proximity to the community, each region now has more than one food depot and each subsector has a food pantry. The sector executive secretary says food is distributed based on the number of family members. As you have seen, we provide 25 kilograms of maize flour to families of six and more. We continue to assess and increase the amount of food provided to families. Ministry of Local Government Professor Shaka Natsa says local authorities supplying food from home to home should keep the COVID-19 guidelines in mind. 
Once we are able to assess how many family members reside in a home, we create packages that should last them between a week or two weeks. We usually provide two-week packages because it is not advisable to return to homes every week. At times, it is possible that some families may need more at the end of one week or in the middle of the week. I have heard that some people have problems and concerns. May they know that we are available and ready to provide answers to their questions. We also request of those not satisfied with their answers to tell us how we can help. By Tuesday, a total of 133,000 households with a population of more than 500,000 will have received more than 3,150 tons of food consisting of beans and maize flour. The first phase consisted of 72,000 families receiving 1,700 tons, while the second phase would receive 1,450 tons. Umgari Jades, RTV News. And officials in Rwanda's Ministry of Justice have told the press that the country has chosen to review 160 out of 284 resolutions it got from the United Nations on human rights protection. And this is because those are the resolutions that the country had observed, or rather has observed, to promote human rights. Jishlen Mugoneza. Thank you. Next speaker is Algeria. Last week, when the UN Human Rights Council reviewed Rwanda's human rights records and the implementation of the 2015 resolutions, it received 284 more recommendations but chose 160 of them. The head of the Ministry of Justice's International Justice in Judicial Cooperation Department, Providence Umurungi, says that they accepted recommendations that are beneficial to the country. <laughs> Most of which we accepted are those that lead to the continuation of where we have reached, like promoting women's rights, fighting sexual violence, and amending the law as we fight discrimination, especially against people with disabilities, discrimination in education, and so on. We receive them well because they are really supportive. However, she says that the recommendations that were given based on reports from people who disagree with Rwanda's policies, from international organizations that have not seen eye to eye with Rwanda in the past and based their assumptions on inaccurate information. There are about four recommendations that were asking us to stop recruiting children in the military. Everyone knows that we cannot do that. For example, those three things that the United Kingdom put in their recommendations, like fighting against human trafficking and carrying out independent investigations, allegedly in our transit centers, and claim that our transit centers are known to have problems that need to be resolved. You hear them starting to bring up things like human trafficking that have nothing to do with the reality on the ground. A political expert, Cyrus Mosi, assures that recommendations are given to the country as a chance to evaluate their performance. The first thing is that when the country is given an advice, is that maybe there is something that has not been achieved. But first is that the country is there, and it has something to do with the support that is being given to the country, especially when these things are going well. But when they point out the problems in the country, it does not mean that the country has these problems, but it means that there is somewhere that the country has not yet arrived. It is also an opportunity for the country to reconsider. You will find that residents benefit from it. But for our government, there are often stride achievements. From 2011 to 2020, things have changed. Sometimes universal periodic review researches do not have a national context because sometimes they go and meet one person and make a conclusion. <laughs> Cyrus Kumusi has also said that there would be serious consequences if a country did not comply with the recommendations given in respect of human rights. These include the fact that investors would stop coming in the country, stopping foreign aid, as well as imposing international sanctions. Residents of Guamagana district in eastern Rwanda believe that granting their town the status of a satellite city to the capital of Kigali will allow them to accelerate in the development. Gabi Mouvigny with the details. 15 kilometers from Ramera in Kigali city, the Kabuga Trading Center sits right at the border of Ramagana district and Kigali, where infrastructure and development in the area is growing at a rapid pace. According to the 2050 vision, 
the town of Ramagana has now assumed the new status of satellite city to the capital of Kigali. The city has to expand in accordance with the new vision. In collaboration with the district authorities, following the national master plan, we have developed the Ramagana plan, which gives us enough hope for systematic development for this city. With the new 2050 vision, the local population says they are ready to utilize the opportunity to expand the developments in the city. We are ready to work and keep up with the growing developments. In terms of business, we see a great opportunity that we do not want to miss. I am happy with this news. I decided to leave Kigali and come to Ramagana to do business. And people should know that Kigali isn't the only place to do business. I would advise people to try and look at Nyamata, Mohanga and Ramagana instead of just staying in Kigali. Ramagana Central Market is famous for its food supplies. However, the buildings are run down and in need of renovation. The private sector says the operation to restore the buildings is now underway. We are working together so that we can build a new modern market that will replace the current one. A company called Ramagana Trading Group Limited has launched the project with an estimated 200 million rand and francs in place that is believed to begin in 2021 and 2022. Randa's 2050 vision predicts that Ramagana, Muhanga and Yamata will acquire the status of satellite city to Kigali with populations ranging between 650,000 to 1 million residents. The other parts of Randa will be between 250,000 to 650,000, while Kigali population will rise to 3.8 million residents. Gabi Movuni for RTV.